It's now two senators who traveled to Libya just 20 days ago. They were part of the same delegation as Senator McCain, who joined us just a moment ago, Senators Lindsey Graham and Senator Mark Kirk. So, Senator Graham, starting with you, why is the capture or death of Muammar Gaddafi important to America? Well, it allows the Libyan people to move forward and make the hard decisions about how to form a democracy out of the ashes of a dictatorship. And what happens in Libya in terms of the regions, the oil supply, uh, the, 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 the Arab Spring, what happens in Libya will matter to us for decades to come. And with Gaddafi gone, it's going to free up the Libyan people to move forward. There was an editorial you wrote together, uh, Senator Graham, uh, from the Wall Street Journal. And one of the things that editorial said is that you would like to expand our economic ties. Because of your mention of oil, I'd like you to expand on that a little bit. How do we expand our economic ties with that country? Well, we can go over there and help them build their infrastructure up. Uh, there are a lot of business opportunities in Libya. They've had a, the, the, the country's been ravaged. They're looking for business partners. And we send business people over to talk with the, uh, with the new regime and try to get a better business relationship like we have all over the world. The partnership is important, isn't it, Senator Kirk, knowing who your partner is? It's, it's widely assumed and known that Muammar Gaddafi was a bad guy. Are we 100% right. confident, though, that the members of this new government are the good guys? No, we're not 100%, but this is a very pro-American government. The people of Libya saw the aircraft uh, of NATO overhead equalizing the battle with the professional military of Gaddafi. They basically assumed that nearly all the aircraft were American, even though many were British and French. And so because of that groundswell of public support for the United States, most Libyan politicians are going to want to be very friendly towards us. It sounds like you're very positive on the actions that President Obama took to make this happen. I am. This is a, a great win for the U.S. military, NATO, the Obama administration, but most importantly, the people of Libya. There are challenges. 28 separate uh, militias now control uh, Tripoli. They need to be unified. We need to keep control of the chemical weapon stockpile and especially to recover the uh, thousands of surface to air missiles, handheld missiles that were released uh, to the various uh, militias. All those are challenges ahead for this new government. But one thing they don't have to worry about is a comeback by Muammar Gaddafi. Senator Graham, what do we do about that? What do we do about the chemical weapons? What do we do about these 20,000 shoulder-fired missiles, uh, the 28 separate m militia groups that are, that are roaming the streets there? What is our role moving forward? Well, we're trying to influence the outcome, and one of the problems I have of leading from behind is that when a day like this comes, we don't have the infrastructure in place that we could have. I'm glad it ended the way it did. It took longer than it should have. If we'd have kept American air power in the fight from the very beginning, it would have been over a lot quicker. 60,000 Libyans have been wounded, 3,000 maimed, 25,000 killed. So let's get in on the ground. There's a lot of money to be made in the future in Libya. There's a lot of oil to be produced. Let's get on the ground and help the Libyan people uh, establish a democracy and a functioning economy based on free market principles. And when it comes to weapons control, get teams on the ground now that can assist this government to make sure that this stuff doesn't fall in the wrong hands. And we don't have much of a presence. There's an opening. Get people on the ground. Can you be more specific about that, Senator Graham, when you're saying get in on the ground? I mean, it's great talking to both of you, by the way, because you're both reservists. What? Senator Graham, Air Force, Senator Kirk, Navy. I don't want to mix those two up. Uh, but <laughs> Senator... the smarter one. <laughs> <laughs> Senator Graham, can you be specific about that? You said get in on the ground. What exactly does well, that mean? Well, you know, I think Mark is, he's the intel officer. I think he could better tell you All right. what the problems are about the weapons and how being on the ground would matter. Senator well, Graham? I think uh, two, two things. One, uh, Senator Graham and I are both for bringing USNS Comfort, a hospital ship, uh, to Tripoli to care for the wounded. Libyan politicians across the board said nothing would make us more popular and would help lock in the gains for the United States than that. And then we need to uh, make sure that we have enough uh, funding and uh, personnel uh, to buy back and or gain custody of the surface-to-air missiles. If they are released from Libya, if they get throughout the Arab world, they could become a long-term danger to civil aircraft around the globe. We're talking about this at a time where there's great austerity, obviously, within our own government and potentially cutbacks within the de Defense Department. Do we have the money to do this? Is this really at the top of our list of national interests to invest in? It should in? be. 
It should be. Number one, they're going to pay us back. They have $34 billion of frozen assets under our control. And as Mark said, the w number one request was help us with our wounded. We have a lot of people who have been maimed, lost legs, and lost arms. We need some medical help and expertise that we don't have. They'll gladly pay us back. The French and the Germans have agreements with the Libyan people to treat their wounded. So we'll get our money back. But the one thing we can't get back is an opportunity. Mm. And this is an opportunity to take a dictatorship, the mad dog of the Mideast, and replace him with people that live in peace with us. We can do business, uh, have uh, economic ties that will allow American businesses to prosper from a free Libya. So I know we're broke, but let me tell you this. If you disengage the world, you'll regret it. And if we miss this opportunity, we'll regret it. They need our help. It's in our interest to help. You're moving our conversation forward on this, and we appreciate that because there's so many more questions about what's next. And it's nice to have both of you uh, and your insights today. Senators, thank you very much for joining us. Right. Thanks for having us. Thank you. So all across Lib Libya, the rebels.